joined by AFL Goldfields Chairman Paul Armstrong. Uh, certainly a big decision uh, that's been made with the other uh, key findings of the, uh, the senior review. It sure was, Chris. It's a lot of hours went into this and credit to the full-time staff at the, at the Goldfields and, and to our three commissioners who worked on the, on the, on the, uh, the panel. It uh, took a long time to come to the, this decision. And there were lots of twists and turns on the way, but I think we've come to an outcome that's maybe based around consolidation of clubs and leagues and just having a watching brief on them over the next two or three years to see how they, uh, how they are going forward. I guess the key thing is that there hasn't been too much result in the change of clubs into leagues and change of league structures, but one of the key aspects is that you, the AFL Goldfields Commission has a sound understanding of where each club is at in the short, medium and long term. Yes, and I think they've got a better idea too. Look, there were a couple of clubs who've changed leagues and there's opportunities for others like you know, Bunyong in the, in the next few years if they want to explore what they need to do to come up to the higher level in the Barrett Footy Netball League. Uh, but you're right, the clubs know exactly where they sit and now they need to just weigh up what their own direction is going forward and we'll support them through the, the full-time staff here, through resources or if they need to be more competitive through the, the, through the points and the salary cap and so forth and we'll do as much as we can to, to help them out. Now, there, there wasn't just sort of one or two meetings with the, with the clubs, there was, there was quite a number of meetings over the course of the year. Well, o over the course of the year, there ended up being five times, uh, at a minimum, per club or, and per league that we sought feedback, whether that be face-to-face -face or via surveys online or, or um, uh, again, face-to-face. -face. It, uh, it, and five times there was a consistent message coming from the majority of clubs. and. Uh, so that, that helped us too, way up we, we really do need to take on board what our stakeholders' uh, thoughts are and um, as I mentioned in the press conference, it's not so much us against them, it's, it's us as a, as a commission over, overseeing the full-time personnel at Goldfields who then in turn support football and netball throughout the region. So that was always our fallback position, what's best for footy and netball in this region at this current period of time. And that's why we came up with not so many of the major changes, but as you saw from that report, there's 40 or so minor tinkerings so that will have a significant effect when you combine them all. Naturally, Central Highlands was a, a massive talking point. Uh, how hard was it to come to the decision to, to, to not change the, uh, the, the competition structure at all? There was a lot of debate about that, and that was certainly the key thing. And I think everybody understands that the league's too big at 18, so a little bit too cumbersome. But to split it in half, uh, with one club in some doubt about where their future sits, it it opens up a, a possibility that those one of those two divisions may fall away a little bit. If you're in what's perceived to be a weaker division, uh, it might be di more difficult for you to recruit. You only need one or two clubs to either fall over and merge, and then you're back with uh, too few clubs. And then to try to piece that all back together would be really difficult uh, after the horse has bolted, so to speak. So. Best to go the other way, we feel for now, uh, to see how clubs then determine where their own future is. And if it's in the current league, the current league that they're in, fantastic. Uh, but if they see the need to maybe find a more equitable competition or merge with somebody else or look at other ways that they can be more competitive, we'll certainly help them out. But in the end, it'll be their choice. From the Riddle competition, we've only seen one club express interest of potentially moving to the Ballarat competition. That's that's Rupert's Wood. Yes. Uh, and one of the hot things you've, you've sort of highlighted is uh, if we have six in the west and six in the east, uh, you know, that, that, is that a possibility that could happen in the in the coming years uh, with this ongoing discussion of Rupert's Wood and other stakeholders? Potentially. And I think that area down there in the Riddle League, there's scope for more clubs down there but with the population growth. If you go to places like Romsey and so forth, they're just bursting at the seams, whereas at the other side of Ballarat, the opposite's probably occurring. So given that the Riddle League review's going to happen in a couple of years' time, uh, that'll be interesting to see how that all pans out, I think. And I think from a, a Riddle a League perspective as well, um, th there's not going to be any changes there, despite uh, perhaps a little bit of speculation that that might, uh, might occur with, uh, under the AFL Goldfields banner, but uh, it, it's safe to say just w with the reviews that the, the clubs are strong and, uh, and, and there's a lot of backing from AFL Goldfields to, to nurture that strength. Yeah, there are. And look, we certainly took into account the difficulties some of the Riddle League clubs face with neighbouring leagues with higher salary caps. So that's something we'll lobby the 
AFL Victoria about uh, because it just becomes more difficult for them to, to attract players when they are uh, up against it really financially. I guess with the Maryborough competition as well, it seems that uh, all is well. Everyone's quite happy. They're, uh, they're enjoying the state of, uh, of where it's going and, uh, and, and looking forward in a positive way. Yeah, and they're realists too. As I said in the report, there's seven clubs within 30 kilometres of Maribor. Whether that's sustainable or not is yet to be determined, but that'll come to the fore over the next few years. And I think clubs will be able to make a, a, a wise decision about which direction they need to take themselves. And lastly, mate, so I know there's a, a big push from the other Ballarat competition to get that all-important 12th team. Oh, yes. Yeah, no, very, and it looks fantastic to see. Well, it looks like Sebastian uh, on paper are going to be more competitive straight away. It just looks like they've, they've worked really hard over the last month or so. Maybe the review sort of has uh, woken a few up down there, but they're... Uh, Look, it's a fantastic facility. You'd hate to lose the best. They've been in, in the competition for a long, long time. So hopefully they're, they're successful and then uh, it opens the door then for somebody else to maybe um, grow quickly enough to then be able to compete in the Biofilly League.